You're probably wondering, how the heck does a tag make a mistake with a set? It's an incredibly strong hand, incredibly difficult to misplay, where are they really going wrong? Well, let's review a hand I played at 1-2, and I'll show you what an average tag tends to do in this spot, and what the highest win rate players are doing in that exact same situation. <music> Alright, so this hand is from vlog episode number three. I'll leave a link for the entire episode down in the description box. But we're playing 1 2 down in Orange City in Florida. We are in the big blind. There's a limp under the gun from a very, very splashy, loose, very fun player. Raised to 10 across the table from the hijack. Call by the small blind. Call here with pocket sevens. Get called by the under the gun player, not shocking. Double check. Yep, still pocket sevens. And this is a totally fine set mine, just simply because we can expect the under the gun player to come along a lot of the time as well. So we're probably going to end up going four way to it. Very likely, very unlikely that the under the gun player is going to limp re raise or anything, just based on the way that I'm playing. So good with everything so far. And I'm going four way to a flop. Small wine checks in the dark. And the flop is jack seven six with two diamonds. And I decide to lead for 15. And this is honestly the most important inflection point in this hand. And it may seem really, really basic, but I promise you it's very, very important. And by the way, if you really like this lead for 15, give this video a thumbs up. And if you don't, Leave a comment. Let me know why. So first and foremost, let's think about what the average tag would do in a situation like this. Totally standard for them to just check in this situation, likely going to face a check from under the gun, and then you're just going to let the preflop raiser either check behind with a lot of their air or bet their strong stuff and make a decision from there. Pretty simple. And that is the default thing for players to do. But I challenge you to think about the benefits of just leading here, also known as donk betting, because I think it's going to be far more lucrative overall. Now, there are a couple different reasons why leading here is going to be much better, in my opinion. First and foremost is, again, think about the way this hand is likely to play if you check. Chances are under the gun checks, and then the preflop raiser is going to make a very basic decision. And because this is a four-way pot, it's more unlikely that they're going to do a tremendous amount of bluff c-betting. So what's likely going to happen when they have things like ace-king or ace-queen or all those whiffed hands or maybe even smaller pocket pairs, whatever it is, chances are they're going to check that a lot of the time. And then we're going to have to see a turn card, and some turn cards are going to be not so great, which isn't wonderful, and we miss an opportunity to put money in right this moment, which can make things a little bit awkward as the hand rolls out and we're trying to really maximize value with our set here. The other reason why I like leading out here is because it's likely going to get called by the end of the gun limper a decent chunk of the time, especially only betting 15 into the $40 pot, you can expect them to continue with pretty much anything that's on the pair side of the spectrum, anything that's drawy, and it just applies even more pressure to the preflop raiser, because when they're sitting there with something like Jack X or an overpair, they're likely going to need to put, or feel they need to put in a nice big healthy raise, which again allows that pot to start growing very, very quickly, which is one of the goals that we have here with such a strong hand. And then number three is that given the size, the original raiser might actually look at this and call with hands that they might have otherwise checked behind with. So if they have something like Ace-King or Ace-Queen or King-Queen or a backdoor draw or even something I mean, like pocket eights, they might look at this and say, okay, well, I'm just going to float this out or peel this out for one and see what happens versus again, you check, they check behind and all of a sudden you're seeing that turn card and you haven't put any money in right this moment. So you can get some extra continuance, which is awesome, especially from hands that would have otherwise checked behind on the flop. So in general, when you're in a situation like this, especially in smaller and micro games, be them live or online, in multi-way pots, definitely consider leading out with your strongest of hands, but keep relative position in mind. So if this were a spot where the positions were you, then the preflop raiser, and then a couple of players between you and them, well, that might be a better spot to check and let the fire happen, and then all of a sudden you can check raise, pinch in a caller, and go from there. Versus this situation where we can pinch in the under the gun player by leading out ourselves, that leads me to make a donk bet in this situation as opposed to just the default check that, again, most tags are likely to make. So continuing on with this hand, our lead for 15 gets called by the under the gun player. The original raiser very quickly raises it up to 55 total, fold by the small blinds, and we think for a moment. 
and end up putting out the call. So facing the race here, obviously folding is not an option. It's just between calling and coming over the top on the flop. And I think calling is going to do better here. It's going to allow that weaker player who's under the gun to really get involved with more hands as opposed to if we decide to three bet over the top in this situation. And really, regardless of what number we choose, it's going to be a very, very committing action. I don't see the under the gun player making quite as many mistakes against it. They just weren't playing that, that splashy up to this point. So I am looking at this and I'm saying, okay, how can I make sure that I give them reasons to always, always continue with a jack? And that's really what I'm looking for here. Yes, sometimes they're going to have those draws. And yes, sometimes they're going to get great prices with that. And sometimes they're going to suck out. It is what it is. But overall, I think this is going to do far better because there are plenty of one pair hands that this player wants to continue with. And I think calling is going to give them the most amount of opportunity to do that as opposed to three betting right here and just allowing them to play way too close to perfect. So as it rolls out in this hand, under the gun ends up folding. Turn is the four of spades. I check. They quickly shove. I beat them in the pot with a call. River is a deuce. They just muck and ship the nice little pot over our way. No complaints whatsoever about these results. So what's the biggest mistake that a tag makes with a set? They never consider leading out. And by doing so, you limit your options, you miss opportunities that are exactly like the one we just reviewed, and it's going to be a massive damper on your win rate. Sure, if your opponent has an overpair here, you're going to get paid off one way or the other. Congratulations. But there's lots of other hands that your opponent could have in their range and lots of other people involved, and that can really make leading a very lucrative option. And to be honest, some of the skills that go into a play like this really aren't that complex at the end of the day once you put in a little bit of time and study. Things like hand rating, things like understanding your own frequencies, your opponent's frequencies, things like bet sizing and line planning are all very, very important and are going to help not only in spots like this, but plenty of others. If you're interested in learning more about those things, I would highly suggest signing up for Vault if you haven't already, splitsuit.com slash Vault, and essentially you can take a spin through all of my best courses on everything from hand rating to frequencies to mental game and everything in between. If you're interested, check out everything today at splitsuit.com slash vault and i can't wait to see you in there as always if you have any comments or questions please do not hesitate to let me know be it about this hand about the entire vlog episode about vault or anything in between don't hesitate to leave a comment on this video and of course a thumbs up if you liked it would be massively massively appreciated i look forward to seeing you back shortly with a brand new video and in the meantime good luck out there and happy grinding